So you'll introduce, you go ahead and introduce. Yes. Good morning, everybody. All right, so we are getting ready for our homily. Welcome to the Institute for Spiritual Development. We are at the portion of our service where we will be delivering the homily for today. And I want to thank Diana right before this. She did an amazing meditation that brings us all out of the mind and back into the heart and very grounding. So if you've not uh, been to one of our Zoom services or our in-person services in Oneonta. I invite you all to do that if you're watching this later or through a different channel on Facebook. And there's so much love and ease that is given through these services that are divinely orchestrated that um, I invite you to those if you've not been to one before. Good morning. My name is Amanda Hoover. I am here to present the homily today. And the title of the homily is called The Tower Moment, The Golden Thread and the Open Door. So here at ISD, we are very familiar with some of the ancient, ancient teachings of wisdom and spirituality. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the aspect of the tower moment that presents in the tarot deck and for those not too familiar with the tarot deck i will tell you it's not this weird magic it's a system that reminds us that we are in a divine reality and that we are divine <clears throat> excuse me and if you have viewed this maybe as woo woo in the past um, i will tell you that until we've had an experience we will often label it or judge it before we truly can understand it from our own experience. Uh, very much with any type of interaction or relationship, we um, as humans sometimes have the tendency to judge it before we've personally experienced ourselves. But you certainly can't explain it until you have. I had a, a wonderful dear friend the other day had a shirt on that said, don't poo poo the woo woo. <laughs> so um, yeah. I thought that was great. And this is ancient, ancient esoteric teachings and wisdom that were long forgotten and, and really suppressed. So one of the things I wanted to mention is that our words and thoughts, you know, that the power of the word, first there was the word, are, they're almost like spells, if we want to talk about magic a little bit. And the word spells, you know, comes from that word spelling, the word, the thought, consciousness creating. And that consciousness creating from our thoughts and our inner word is affecting our bodies. It affects our relationships. It affects our outer circumstance and our inner peace. So when we understand the power of our own consciousness, we then have the ability to take our power back over some of these more lower thought forms, these more shadow thought forms of profound fear or lack or survival. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, so we have this opportunity here um, to understand, I apologize for the interruption, um, that I heard somebody recently say that we are God source creation in one unit. And that's really, really powerful because if we are that powerful to create with our word and with our thought, think of what we can do when we all heal the power of our thought within us. So today I wanted to illustrate a little bit about what Joseph Campbell termed as the hero's journey that you'll often see in some amazing movies like Star Wars or these movies like The Wizard of Oz, that there is this hero. Heru, Heru, Horus, um, hero. It's kind of like that Christ consciousness path that we begin to walk on that golden thread and the golden brick road to learn the lessons so that we can ascend into higher states of consciousness. So through this hero's journey, um, and early on in my days, I, I used to judge Disney quite a bit. And those who know me know I use it a lot in the Ascension teachings. Um, and I love it now because I don't view it I would say, as this outer Prince Charming coming to rescue you, it's really illustrating how the inner relationship works. And in the end of these movies, we really see how the hero's journey plays out for us to get to this inner healing of the divided self so that we are in this more divine union. So what is a tower moment? A tower moment is a time where it is perceived that everything is falling apart where the very foundation of what we perceive to be our safety and controlled knowing 
appears to be demolished right in front of us, often associated with perceived control of the outer. Diana said in her opening in the beginning of the service today, she was talking about self-defeating thoughts and personal challenges with new solutions, new resolve. So it's not so much about what's happening in the outer, but how we respond to it is how we alchemize and shift and heal. So the tower moment, and some may cringe when I say this, can be a profound gift from our soul to shift perceptions of how we perceive our outer circumstance from within us. And towers can only fall if we've built them in the first place. We can have tower moments for five minutes, for days, for weeks, or we can be in despair and choose suffering for sometimes months or maybe even years. It is a time when we are not in trust of the divine nature of reality and ourselves and our soul path. These days, I'm more in resonance with expanding my light temple versus building an inner tower that is high and hard to climb. When I was younger and I started meditating, uh, I came to a scene in my dreamscape and there was this like really small cabin. I don't wanna say it was a shack, but <clears throat> it was really small, although it felt safe and beautiful. And behind it was this nature scene. And the only way I can describe it in the, the movie Tangled, the story, the hero's journey of Rapunzel has always come in for me. That scene that's really beautiful in nature filled with the tower, with her tower in the background. And that's what the scene looked like in my higher dreamscape. And when I first, what I, the way I met Diana, um, our pastor, is I went to her first psychic reading. And when I listen to her divinely receiving information she started talking about my grandmother and energy and she started talking about mrs potts i don't know if i've i've said this before from beauty and the beast and my grandmother looked exactly like angela lansbury and she would loved angela lansbury and that was the voice of mrs potts so when diana kept going with this message i really felt this connection with my grandmother who had passed and i started this journey with the higher self kind of grandmother wisdom through meditation as well as through my heart's connection through my grandmother so um that was kind of the beginning of me understanding there's something so much more here um, that i was being called to this mission with diana um, one of the other really beautiful Disney movies that I like to use, Kimberly, our board president, and I were talking about this last night around a campfire, um, is the Moana movie. And if you've never seen the Moana movie, I highly recommend it from, a, from an Ascension standpoint. And she is talking with her free-spirited grandmother who's swimming by the manta rays. And she's kind of got her, up, her arms up and she's saying, in my next life, I want to come back as one of these. And it's really representing that inner nature within us that has really kind of been suppressed and oppressed for a long time by fear and control of the divine feminine energy, which is very free flowing. It's very receptive. It listens. It surrenders to the currents. It magnetizes to it versus having to go figure out, fix or control the outer. And that's a new paradigm that we are all stepping into that has been very foreign to us for a very long time. It's this inner voice I talk about quite often is that power of the word, the power of thought. Um, and there's a lot of connection here for how we build the tower with our inner voice that eventually will fall on the ascension path. So we're often used to in our society, and this comes from the stories that are told and the myths from our ancestors and through some of this more shadow fallen consciousness of the shadow masculine, that judgmental authoritarian God, or um, the, the mother that's more manipulative or, um, or needing to kind of more quietly seek control out of fear. 
And that's a voice that we have within us that can sometimes be passed down through our parents or through society. Again, we have the, the divine voice and the shadow voice comes through them, right? Because we're all human. But this inner voice of kind of reconnecting, a reconnection, a divine reconnection to the divine mother voice inside, to the divine father voice inside versus the more fear-based egoic inner voice that wants to build that tower. So in the movie of Moana, um, she has a father who's very kind of controlling because he has a lot of fear. It's a trauma response. And he doesn't want her to go out and fulfill her soul's calling. He wants to keep her from the water and she's pulled to the water. So it's just one of those examples of that um, more shadow voice that becomes our inner voice of being having fear of maybe not chasing our dreams or not um, doing that thing that we always dreamed of doing, right? So those inner voices cause us to kind of create that tower where we lock ourselves in and don't actually do the things that we've dreamed of doing. Um, another example of this is I was talking about Rapunzel in the beginning in the movie Tangled. She's considered um, in the beginning of that movie, the lost princess, and she's in a tower. And she was stolen. She was a baby that was stolen um, for her beautiful golden magical hair by this shadow feminine mother Gothel, who is literally sucking her her life force through her golden hair. And this is um analogy and symbolic of how our own vital life force gets sucked through that shadow um, feminine voice. And what was the voice of Mother Gothel? For those of you who've seen this movie, um, she was teaching Rapunzel, don't go outside the tower. Be afraid. Everything outside is very scary. Don't go out there. Um, don't trust yourself. Don't question me. Don't think for yourself. So all of those inner voices that that play out through through us meeting that shadow feminine in the outer. Um, so her beautiful, magical golden hair that she had is that golden thread that we all have that is kind of be it's the it's the uh, above the wave under the wave of these kind of lower thought forms of fear and anxiety of that golden thread of truth of divine nature of interconnection that's so beautifully portrayed in that movie so the the really neat part about rapunzel is though even though she's got these like really constricting shadow feminine inner voices happening to her she from this mother gothel she's still dreaming and painting on the walls in her tower of these beautiful heart's desires and this like ancient memory she has of her divine royalty. And it's a beautiful analogy of how, of how we can do that on the inner. Her inner knower, knowing was always guiding her in this movie, her beautiful gifts of inner child joy and intuition. Yet again, her tower was still very high and hard to climb. Another example of this is Dorothy and the Wicked Witch. And if you think of the part in the movie of the Wizard of Oz where Dorothy is locked in the tower, again, this is that analogy. These, these people that were writing these stories very much understood the tarot and the hero's journey. And the Wicked Witch is yelling at her, right? You killed my sister. You're horrible. You're disgusting, right? And, and ultimately, what is that? That is her own inner shadow voice of guilt and her own shame that she was holding on to this event, right? That this outer Wicked Witch was, is reflecting and mirroring back to her, that inner voice of, of shame and guilt. Um, Cinderella is another good example of, you know, not being good enough, being the slave to an outer imposed reality. And where did she find her peace, right? In the divine masculine and feminine voices of nature and nature's song and her fairy higher self godmother, that grandmother energy. So the outer shadow feminines and masculines can show us our own insecurities, right? These people in our lives in the outer can reflect back to us our own insecurities, our fear of lack of self-worth playing out through the outer characters in our life. And I empower you in those moments to really take a minute to use that mirror to say, how am I doing that to myself? What is this showing me? What is this outer earth school moment showing me? Uh, 
and where where are those voices within me needing healing so they're not showing up so much in the outer through other people and these are the voices of the divine mother and father that our children profoundly need to hear from us especially in their own tower moments so we can heal this generational ancestral survivalist consciousness so in rapunzel in the movie tangled when her divine masculine does show up and again i'm i'm portraying this from think about it from the inner voice right with her tiara actually he has her tiara the universe works in mysterious ways her fear and her intuition um together you know there's trauma intuition there's real intuition but there is something about this guy that's a little wonky she ends up hitting him profoundly on the head with a frying pan and locks him in the closet right her her fear is taking over her ability to kind of meet her divine masculine and through their love and adventures and their building of trust that softens the hard edges for both of them and that's that inner union that we talk about where we can start to soften the hard edges in ourselves with love um so at the end of that movie he destroys her magic to save her and her tears of being abandoned forsaken lost alone by the death of her divine masculine a golden tear runs down her face and saves his life and for those of you who have seen that movie he literally cuts off her golden hair right before that because he knows she will be you know destroyed by this mother gothel if she continues to have that golden hair so her tear her sacred divine tear is what that came from within her not from her hair is what restored him and brought him back to life and brought them back to that inner balance that is then seen in the outer. It wasn't something outside of her, it was something within her. Her sacred golden threaded tear. Dorothy is another example of this. It was within her the whole time. Remember, she didn't really need those ruby slippers. She didn't, she didn't even really know they were magical and that she had them on her feet and she could use them the whole time. Just like Cinderella went through the perceived hardships in the outer, she began to see her beauty and her worth in that reflection of that beautiful blue dress. The possibility of inner child magic and wonder. The inner divine masculine, divine feminine, inner voice, alchemical wedding, divine union dance. These are the teachings of Mary Magdalene, of the great ascended masters, of the bridegroom within. The divine mother father voice healing what is not that to eventually embody it within us the divine lover voice within her within us the divine brother sister voices and child within us those are the true divine intuition wisdom voices not the trauma fear-based illusory intuition the divine feminine so soft and gentle and listens and is patient and can wait for the open door to be presented when that tower falls, when we don't know what to do. We can surrender. The divine masculine voice of encouragement and reverence and respect and sweet, tender smile, trust in his feminine and himself. That is the healthy voice, that is the divine voice. So what do we do when this tower that we've built so high falls? When all the walls around our heart are built so high out of fear and the very foundation we know of this paradigm collapses. This is ascension. It feels like death of the personality. Death by initiation, the ancients would call it. Death of the old, of the shadow voices through outer circumstance, wisdom, experience. Through feeling abandoned, through an illness, through pain, through hardship or betrayal or perceived abandonment. This is that inner shift from survivalist consciousness to faith, to trust in divine nature and the wonder of miracles. The golden thread within of our own intuition, our own inner, inner child faith, our surrender to the divine plan, not the one our daily personality had for us. That is the golden dawn. That is the inner temple. That is the fallen tower. The removal of these old stories, of these old voices. The tower moment shows us our strength, our fortitude, our community. 
what needed to go that we can't take with us. It reminds us to be humble, that we truly are not in control, so why do we try so hard to be? The grand mystery of the grand design, that much of what was holding that tower to together probably needed to go anyway. To the initiate, the tower moment is a catalyst for profound change, for inner growth, often for the better when we are finally on the other side of it, seeing the blessings in disguise. Removing the bricks of the tower one by one or having it collapse completely. The master or the adept who understands initiation and the golden path understands that these are all just stories. The stories we were passed down, the stories of the shadow, the stories of fear. The Buddha knows, or the Bodhisattva, that the power of surrender to the present moment, once all has fallen away, it knows of the power to float and flow with the current, the power to wait for the open door to present itself, to go within and hear the voice of the divine masculine singing to you, I just called to say I love you. I just called to say how much I care. So look for the open door in these moments. It will always appear and you will know when it comes. Blessings for a wonderful spring and summer and rest of your weekend. And just know when you are in those moments to surrender, to float and wait for the open door and trust the golden thread of your intuition. Thank you everybody. And thank you Facebook for joining us today. And any more information wanted for our services or our offerings, you can visit us at isconiata.org. Have a wonderful day.